What's going on Babylonians? It's me Songs of Rays and I'm back with some more Dead Island 2 gameplay to bring to you. Now today's guide we're going to be discussing how to be able to get the most out of your ranged weapons and ultimately how to be able to make the strongest ranged weapon when it comes to this game. Now it turns out in Dead Island 2 it's really easy to be able to make the best kind of weapons and I've done a little bit of testing just to make sure that I have got the right mods to be able to make the, the strongest we possibly can do and this allows you to be able to two tap some of those Apex variants as long as you can get the setup right and it really is that simple just to be able to delete everything that comes in your way. But before we go any further, make sure that if you did enjoy this guide and you're looking forward to some more Deadline 2 gameplay from ourselves, make sure to drop that like and subscribe so you know how to find your way back to the channel. But with all that said and done, let's get right into it. Alright, so first and foremost, there are several different kind of ranged weapons when it comes to this game, and all of them are very useful, all of them are very strong, and it's all about being able to build them up to a certain degree so that you're able to then take down everything that stands in your way. Now we do have things that are relatively easy to be able to use, we do have things like nail guns and we have our pistols that do relatively decent amounts of damage and some of these being full autos, especially with some of the, like, the uh, body count ARs, allowing you to be able to do a lot of damage output relatively easy just by holding down that trigger. But the strongest amount of damage that you can possibly get is going to be out of hunting rifles, or so, so for example like the Peggy with its sharpshooter variant allowing it to do a massive amount of damage per bullet, but it's relatively slow fire which means that you do have to kind of like take that into consideration if you do uh, get swarmed in right up in front. And it's not very good against butchers and the reason why is because one it does do the bleed variant on the Peggy, but you can get other kind of marksman rifles as well to be able to change around that front end. Uh, but also because of that low rate of fire they're able to block bullets it and because of that you're not you're then pretty much gonna, they're going to close the gap they're going to be able to do all worlds of hurt onto yourself and there's not much that you can do about it unless you start swapping over to a melee weapon now there is another type of weapons that are actually pretty much just as strong but obviously then sacrifice a little bit of the raw power blight damage that the peggy has uh, to, to be able to then start making up with fire rate allowing you to be able to take on more of the horde to be able to take on those butchers when they start getting a bit closer and then that means they can't block every single bullet that's going to be coming your way on top of that i have relatively large ma magazines as well overall it's just an astounding weapon to be able to go and use and that's actually going to be the sporting rifle now the sporting rifle as standard comes with a scope which is insane, it allows you to be able to deal with long range threats, seems so like how the Peggy would do but uh, instead of having to rely on iron sights you can actually use the scope if you want to and it's also got a relatively tight hip fire as well meaning that you don't even have to be able to look down the scope, I rarely ever use the scope when it comes to this weapon but I'm still able to actually pick off some heads because of that tight hip fire as well. On top of that, because of the relatively high fire rate compared to the Peggy, we have a stat of 200 compared to what the Peggy has at 50, meaning that we can just pretty much make up for that difference or that loss in damage by having a much faster boosted fire rate in of itself, allowing us to be able to take on hordes, to be able to take on apex variants, and not have to worry so much about where we actually land some of our shots. On top of that, it also boasts the exact same sharpshooter profile that the Peggy also has, or these types of marksman rifles have, meaning that aiming for heads and limbs are going to guarantee us some critical shots, so it's relatively easy easy to be able to land those critical shots and it also on top of that if we do ever end aim down our sights we get even more damage so let's have a look into it to be able to see the, the mods that I've actually put on this to be able to show what makes it so good and let's actually dive down into it a little bit more so if you open up the item card you can see that this is a projectile based profile it has the sharpshooter where if we do use our aim mode we also boost our damage so it requires if we start taking some pot shots from range we will be able to do a little bit more damage to some of the targets and weaken them before they get close to us and because it also has a massive range of 3000 means we're never really going to see a drop off in our damage unless we're pretty much firing from one end of the beach all the way to another uh, when it comes to like pier or venice beach or something like that. Overall, pretty much when the zombies are going to be spawning in, that's pretty much, you know, you're, you're going to be within range with this, so you never really have to worry about that damage drop-off. On top of that, because if we target our heads, which is instinctive when it comes to uh, rifles in, the, in this sense, uh, and also limbs, which is quite nice, so if we do go for like a maiming uh, kind of build, we're able to increase our, uh, our damage as well, so that means we can aim for things like kneecaps, we can aim for uh, like, uh, um, like elbows and stuff like that, and we're able to land those consistent critical hits. It just increases our massive like, lethality when it comes to this gun, allowing us to be able to push into those five-digit numbers. 
Now I have been messing around with the main barrel on this or the main mod to be able to adjust how much kind of like damage it does and there are some great options when it comes to this. Uh, the electric one was actually one of my mainstays and it allowed me to be able to utilize uh, different curveballs or allows me to uh, use, interact with the environment to be able to deal damage to zombies on top of obviously being able to stun them, deal a little bit of damage over time etc. And um, So while this mod of the mutilator mod doesn't possess any damage over time it also has no drawbacks, has no weaknesses meaning that this can be used on every single zombie that you will ever encounter and you never have to worry about it. The only time that damage will ever be uh, nullified is if you go against a riot gear zombie and that means that you're just purely hitting where their armor still exists on their body and then otherwise any, any other time apart from that you will always be doing damage with this rather than having something like maybe a caustic when you go against like hazmat zombies uh, or if you go for like an electric one you go against a shocking zombie etc um, you, you'll always have that one drawback that one type of enemy that you can never achieve with this whereas if you do go for the mutilator mod you're always going to be able to tackle every single threat that comes your way Either way, it still gives us a massive physical damage boost, and every single one of the mods, as long as you get the exact same rarity, in which case I've got tier 3, uh, will always give you a massive damage boost, so it's pretty much negligible, it just purely changes what type of damage you would be doing. Uh, but once again, Mutilator, most consistent out of all of them, and this just means I can always pick this out, and I can always deal with some zombie threats when they come my way. Now I did manage to get a variant that has an extended mag, overall you probably don't need this one, you probably could get away with like using force if you want to be able to uh, push them back, but extended mag is really good for being able to take on hordes in case you've got like a butcher that's chasing you down or you've got more than one, uh, then you can actually use this extended mag to, allowing you to be able to put more rounds out rather than having to uh, like start a reload or something like that. So overall this is one of my favourite ones, uh, but I, I am still technically looking out for some better mods when it comes to that, maybe something that increases my lethality or maybe my force. On top of that, we do have Bloodthirsty, Violent, and Damaging. Now, Bloodthirsty and Violent, I do consider to be the two best perks when it comes to this game, allowing us to be able to, just from doing our own job of killing zombies, giving us a massive damage boost, and this allows us to, uh, in effect, with all of these perks all added on top of each other, after we start ramping ourselves up, we get roughly an extra 100% damage boost on top of what we were originally doing, so the more enemies that we do start killing, the more damage potential we have, and I have seen this uh, end up hitting over 11,000 in a single crit, and this allows us to be able to take um, the majority of Apex variants in maybe two shots or less, uh, and in some cases if it's like some of the some of the hard hitting ones like maybe uh, the Mutator or the uh, the Inferno Crushers or something like that, it will take three to four, but it's still very ammo efficient when it comes to this, and it's still one of the better rifles, as long as we're able to hit those crits anyway, uh, it's still one of the better kind of weapons to be able to take out there, there's not much that will actually be able to compete with this. So the reason why we've gone for these mods is obviously Bloodthirsty. The main part of it is going to be that moderate damage boost. And granted, it's quite nice to be able to get that increased fury, just to be able to have that fury button ready to go, just in case we do get swamped a little bit by maybe several mutators at once. Uh, and on top of that, we've also gone for Violent, doing the exact same thing, giving the same moderate damage boost. And these two do stack, um, so you don't need to worry about, um, like, like, maybe this is just like irrelevant as soon as you put Bloodthirsty. It's always worthwhile being able to put these two on there, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and this is what gives us the massive damage output that we were able to grab. On top of that, I did mess around with the third one because uh, while damaging just says increases damage, it doesn't give us an idea as to how much it will actually do, and I do believe it may vary depending on the gun. I'm not entirely sure if it's a percentage thing or a flat uh, flat damage based thing, uh, but uh, I did mess about with this and honed, which uh, allows you to be able to do increased critical hit damage at the cost of just standard damage. Because of how easy it is to be able to land crit, I thought maybe honed would actually be the better of the options, and after I managed to, that, considering that was the only mod that I swapped over and I was just like still ramping up my build doing the exact same thing that I was normally doing it kind of worked out to be maybe like a couple hundred difference so it, it, it was barely anything it was kind of negligible uh, and to, to always have that cost of uh, just sort of like taking away the potential damage just from landing it if you like a shot goes astray and you don't actually land that critical it just didn't seem worth it. Uh, so I've gone for the more consistent of the two. I've gone for damaging, and damaging is relatively easy to be able to get from playing the story anyway. Uh, so it's always a great option to be able to go in there. And these are the three mods that I have chosen. Now, if you do find that you don't want damaging in there, it's technically the flex spot when it comes to uh, all, the, all the, uh, the mods that we've had a look at. And you technically can go for something where you're able to like do an explosion or do a uh, like a forceful uh, kind of like knockwave, like shockwave or something like that when you do actually kill an enemy. That is definitely an option for yourself. You definitely can mess about with that, and that will start weakening some other zombies that are actually nearby. Uh, so it's really, really good for horde or uh, kind of like mob control in that kind of sense. Um, but uh, I just found that that didn't necessarily work too well with 
this. I want this as primarily a pretty much like a single tap or two tap uh, rifle so I can just take out select zombies when I want to. Uh, but that by no means is that a bad, bad option so I wanted to maximize that DPS with this one. But if you do want to be able to mess about with that yourself feel free. I probably would recommend it. It's definitely something that's worthwhile giving a go and uh, yeah definitely not a bad shout whatsoever. So how does this gun work in practice? Well, let's have a quick look Is if we head up here. There should be some zombies floating around ready for us to be able to start doming. Uh, so because this is right gear, the only one that we can, the only place we can target is the head. Once again, just a one tap. And as you can see in the top left, we, it allows us to be able to like start stacking the rest of our skill tree, allowing us to be able to do even more damage on top of what the weapon mods we already had were. Uh, so granted, this could be made better if you do actually go for a, some really nice skill tree build. And I will be do, releasing a video being able to explain that off. Now we do have a vicious butcher right here, uh, or just a normal butcher, allowing us to be able to show what this can do. So if we take that out that's one um, all my perks dropped off but you can see the sheer power of this in terms of the amount of damage that you can actually do now obviously this is very reliant on terms of like placing your shots into in like you may actually been able to hit in the first place and like I said the, the hit fire on this is just really good uh, allowing us to be able to like dink and dome enemies from afar just like that and it just, the amount of damage or DPS that this can do per shot is probably the best when it comes to this whole game. Considering the fact that, uh, you know, you're able to har carry 25, well, in my variant anyway, you're allowed to carry 25 in the magazine, and then you can carry a further 90 rounds on top of that, meaning that you're carrying 115 rounds that you can just delete things. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's a screamer. That's just been taken down in two shots. Now, Slobbers do have uh, some nice resistance against yourself when it comes to that but they still go down relatively quick but everything else you know there's a standard zombies like shamblers in terms of runners in terms of walkers and all that kind of thing they just die in one shot and like I said it is literally just that simple that you can just one tap and you are good to go now of course I've heard it. As, soon as, that, as soon as that didn't die in one shot oh, wait, it's got to be a mutator hasn't it So if we start working our build, that would have been a four shot if I'd actually landed my shots, but uh, you know, considering mutators are like one of the hardest things to be able to take down in this game, I think four shots is relatively good. And it's probably, you know, it, just, it just makes mince, we, uh, mince meat of everything that you could possibly come your way. So overall, I genuinely think this is the strongest weapon, and uh, the, the best of it is not even a legendary variant. is really, really nice. Which means that you can always just pick, pick on this uh, one of these up, and then just always mod it onto there. So just to recap, let's uh, let's go have a look at the mod. So once again, you want a sporting rifle. In terms of like the uh, the main perk, the mainstay one, extended mag is always pretty good. But if you can get one that potentially have rolls with damage, then that's absolutely stunning. That's that's probably one of the better ones you can grab. Or alternatively, maybe accuracy to be able to improve that that hit fire to be able to take on some longer range distance. Uh, in terms of the mods, you preferably want, would like a mutilator mod, but feel free to be able to experiment and mess about with that if you do want to be able to try a different kind of damage type as well. And then on top of that, we want bloodthirsty, we want violent, we want damaging to be able to get the most DPS out of this weapon. Well, there we go. Thank you so much for going, making your way to the end of the video. Thank you so much to the Babylonian family, as always, for their continued support. It really does help chat out. Let me know in the comment section down below what do you think? What is your favorite rifle or what favorite gun when it comes to this game? And are you going to potentially start gearing your way up to be able to get one of these better sporting rifles as well? But anyway, since that is the end of the video, I guess that just leaves me to say keep yourself safe, keep yourselves well, and I'll see you all on our next video.